good evening, everyone. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon. I don't know what I should say. And uh, I'm extremely happy to be here. And uh, I also want to express my my uh, happiness uh, that that uh, this community is moving along. And uh, uh, many of you uh, know me since before. I've been uh, been at a lot of the navigation efforts um, historically. So, uh, in my uh, effort, uh, as you have seen, and uh, there has been a lot of news about it, is, uh, is the emergence of maritime informatics as, as, uh, as a discipline responding to global concerns. Uh, informatics is a, is a very strong expression for mm -hmm. taking a holistic stance on different things. And uh, what we have done is basically to find ways for both practitioners and researchers to join forces in enhancing efficiency, sustainability, resilience, and safety of shipping. So next, please. Um, we have managed to um, pinpoint or to, to get a, a, a good uh, grounding of maritime mathematics, um, especially by numerous of articles coming out written about and together with the industry, and uh, also uh, launching two books, uh, which is now um, picking up very much and also in, in, in uh, the, the training and educational sector, which is very good because we need to cater for the new generation coming forward as well. So what is it all about? It is about uh, balancing capital productivity on one side uh, and on the other side uh, caring about the energy efficiency. And the capital productivity is most often something that is of concern for the single organization, uh, while energy efficiency needs to be something that uh, is brought to us by common concern. Uh, it is uh, an expression for trying to, to respond to organizational, global and humanitarian concerns. Uh, we had some work together with the World Economic Forum where we realized that about uh, 8,000 or 10,000 people are dying every day due to, uh, to, due to starvation. And just think about it, if our uh, shipping system doesn't work uh, and there is a delayed ship and nobody's reporting about it in, in, in one port, uh, if they would report about it in time, that would also mean that uh, you could redirect other transports and maybe saving some lives and now during the covid we have also seen that there has been challenges in bringing forward um, uh, necessary humanitarian equipment uh, such as face masks and so on um, just before you change slide uh, i would just like to say that there are three focus areas it is about digital collaboration uh, that uh, concerns uh, incentives and cyber security. Philip, fantastic for your talk, thanks a lot. Uh, digital data sharing and decision making, supporting standardization and situational awareness. And as you know, I've been dealing a lot with, with the port collaborative decision making historically to try to get the port to get a good situational awareness. And also data analytics, which I think that that uh, Mr. Wu Seng Jim uh, showed very well that there's a lot of things that can be done by the uh, increasing amount, uh, expo exponential amount of uh, increasing amount of data coming forward. So uh, next, uh, this, uh, um, what, what is what is the maritime ecosystem? It is it is unique, uh, and I think that we need to address that. It is the oldest and largest uh, sharing economy. It is global. It is flat. It is self-organized. Uh, it builds up on federated democratic governance. In it, it is asset intensive and with high demands on optimized resource utilization. It is not allowing for one owner, and we need to cater for the episodic interactions. And I think, for example, the initiative of the of the um, uh, uh, maritime connectivity uh, platform. Uh, and MCC is a very good mean that uh, that the uh, or measure that the the industry has taken for for coming around that. So uh, next, please. Uh, if you look into the uh, the uh, scope of maritime mathematics, it's trying to cater for the port-to-port -port, uh, uh, transports and and looking into that context. And uh, if you talk about digitalization, you can never. Uh, detach that from the human practice, which means uh, in, in principle that you need to understand the logic of what is happening. And what we are looking into is to digitally connecting um, uh, people, goods, port ships and infrastructure in order when we are innovating the maritime ecosystem, responding to the needs of uh, the, 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 uh, the passengers, the cargo owners, uh, the, the transport buyers, uh, the shipping companies, uh, and also the other modes of transports. Next, please. 
Uh, and what we did brought, bring forward in the in the maritime mathematics was to look into a kind of an OSI model, if you if you are familiar with that, with with the different layers where we are looking upon data communication, data exchange, data stream mining, decision support, uh, but also the more structural, regional, and global aspects uh, that needs to be catered for. And I think that most of the things that are addressed here on, during the conference is how can we actually take a global collaboration in order to cater for the data data communication and data exchange that is to be used to enhance the capital productivity and energy efficiency. Next, please. Having said that, uh, it is self-organizing. There is no single Keystone organization. We do not have an Apple in, in shipping. Uh, it is distributed control and it's a very loosely coupled organizations that are engaged, adapting autonomously and organically. Next, please. Uh, having said that, what do we need? We need to connect what happens at sea with what happens at shore. Uh, there's no question about it. We need to enhance the predictability and uh, movements and operations. Uh, sometimes I feel like, uh, is it really possible? Because everybody is really acting uh, on their own behalf, uh, but at least we, can, we should come to a situation where we have enhanced our supply chain visibility. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but I mean, if you look outside Oakland, uh, which we revealed just recently, you saw that uh, when this congestion arrived, there was a lot of uh, steaming outside the port and some ships waited even up to 21 days. And the distance was normally 400 nautical miles, but they steamed more, almost close to 2000 nautical miles when going between Los Angeles and, and San Francisco. And in those cases, just in time shipping doesn't help. Uh, so we need to look on, on, on this from a holistic point of view. And now we have a new situation servicing with 40 ships, 40 large container ships waiting outside Los Angeles. And that is equivalent to the, uh, how much uh, Port of Gothenburg is handling per, for one year, the amount of containers that is staying outside there. Uh, and now there are big reports coming that, that, uh, that um, the, the uh, land-based infrastructure cannot really handle this. So these disruptions along the supply chain needs to be also taken into consideration when we design our methods for how to move forward. So uh, next slide, please. Um, what we did then uh, to, to uh, surface some kind of framework here is to look upon maritime transport as a self-organized uh, ecosystem, ping or next, uh, and that is driving us towards a foundational viewpoint, looking into information sharing communities. We have local information sharing communities, such as port community systems, but we also do have more horizontal information sharing communities, such as trade lands. We look into the appointment economy, uh, which is uh, where you try to move from coordination based on physical presence towards the, the, the more virtual coordination. Uh, and I think that uh, I, I would really salute what BIMCO is trying to do with the virtual arrival clause, for example. Uh, standardization is of course important and uh, that's story we know all of, uh, all of us, but also the collaborative alignment. And uh, I mean, in, in comparison with aviation, for example, ships are very long time at sea and uh, why we need to uh, continually adapt and align towards each other given the different circumstances that arise. Next, please. Um, and uh, this would then drive us towards uh, establishing sustainable and smart ports, uh, smart ships and intelligent cargo. Next, please. And uh, would be then empowered by data fusion, machine learning, digital twins, etc. And that uh, then, next please, provides decision basis for balancing the environmental sustainability and capital productivity. Next, please. So just a, small, a fast touch point on, on, uh, on uh, what, what we are talking about. For, first of all, I mean, if you look into a process of collaborative al alignment, uh, you see this famous metro map that we made for Port GDM, uh, and, and uh, that, that also Michael Bergman talked about yesterday. And it is very much about not providing the decisions, but providing a, 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 a foundation or a, a situation awareness for the involved actors to uh, bring something for each of the actors to, 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 to base their decisions on. So, uh, and this is building up on the assumption that no one sits on the, on the whole truth. Uh, and these are things that is of course uh, being surfaced in just-in-time shipping. Uh, we could also talk about elastic time slot management or virtual queue tickets. 
uh, and uh, and uh, I think that uh, as we see now, market forces are very strong in this industry. I mean, uh, I have a, I have a hypothesis that a lot of the shipping capacity is now placed uh, in the world is placed on where the where the biggest freight prices are, and that means that uh, that uh, there are some places in the world that is not having enough shipping capacity at the moment. So those are big questions that needs to be also taken into considerations when we when we're looking into this, and maybe a marketplace for for slot time trade would be a, a mean to actually uh, take this leap towards a more virtual coordination. Next, please. Uh, and and uh, this is what is coming forward in in uh, what we call the the the, uh, the uh, appointment economy and and uh, we also need to realize that uh, we do have a situation where where from a port point of view uh, the port is visited by several fleets uh, and from the ship point or shipping companies point of view uh, they are visiting several ports so there there are actually two sides of the same coin when it comes to optimization processes uh, of port calls um, next please I would be fast. Uh, we have the information sharing communities, uh, which is uh, on a very, uh, very uh, highly debate at the moment uh, on, on how you actually can commit, connect those information sharing communities in a good way. And especially now when we have more and more data coming in from sensors uh, that, that, that uh, complement our, our image. Next, please. Uh, when it comes to standardization, we do have the, uh, a number of different efforts, and I, I salute also the work that uh, Jeppe was presenting yesterday about the IMO reference data model uh, as a way to align a number of different initiatives going forward. And I also am very happy for, for the support that Ayala made for, for bringing the port call message format forward. But we should also be aware of, and we should acknowledge that there are a number of different private initiatives going on, such as what DCSA is doing in the shipping sector and IATA is doing in the in the aviation sector. That have also also reflected in the second informatics, maritime informatics book, if anybody is interested. Next, please. Going forward, um, just a few words. Uh, when you look into sustainable ports, we would look at the port as a transport hub, but also as, as an information hub and as an energy hub. And uh, you maybe just saw that Mersk went out and said that they've just bought 10, uh, I think it was 10 metal on ships. And that means that they are basically asking for, please settle now the, the infrastructure for us to get uh, fuel. Uh, otherwise, this will not work. So there's a push in the industry towards maybe the ports could access energy hubs. Uh, next, please. We also see that the movement of smart ships uh, with uh, especially also another thing that uh, my uh, co-authors, uh, if I say that, that uh, they claim that, that uh, ship recycling is a, is a huge uh, thing that actually uh, could be compared with and, and uh, maybe contribute even better to, 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 uh, to the uh, decarbonization than just-in-time shipping. Uh, so digitalizing uh, what components that you can reuse uh, is something that is, is of highly importance. Um, uh, you have at autonomous functions, of course, uh, and uh, much data generation and uh, providing them decision support for onboard and onshore operations. Next, please. Um, uh, we also have movements in intelligent cargo. Uh, you have a number of companies that are now placing uh, placing intelligent devices on containers. I think that is uh, something that can be used in very many different use cases, including navigation. But uh, we, we can also talk about fire, fire prevention, for example, that is a, a strong problem in, in, in the sector. Next, please. So uh, in principle, we are moving and the trans uh, maritime sector is transforming from fragmented situation awareness to common situation awareness, from low information quality to high and reliable information quality, from lacking and planning horizons to predictable operations, unstructured information exchange to standardized data exchange, from sub-optimized operations with the silos to more mature collaboration culture, uh, hopefully from unnecessary waiting times to just-in-time operations and from low IT maturity to enhanced IT systems and third-party operations. And just to give a note of the next please, a note of carefulness here. Uh, my um, next please, uh, my um, uh, situation uh, and uh, next please. Uh, looking into uh, what is happening here. We have a lot of efforts being put into standardization. There's no question about it, but we cannot stop there. We need to move into phase two of the data-driven decision-making for collaboration and synchronization, where there are at least three aspects that are important. Collaborative alignment, synchronized and coordinated operations, and empowered decision-making. Next, please. This would then uh, pave the way for the reasons why shipping are existing with the multimodal integration. And next, please. Then providing 
the capital productivity uh, that we are looking for, efficiency, resilience, safety, and sustainability. Uh, next, please. And, and, uh, uh, and this needs to be forwarded backwards. So we need to really look into what the industry really are desiring. And I mean, you know that there's a lot of money now floating around in the shipping sector. And, and I, I'm not 100% sure that they are making the appropriate investments in relation to standardization, to be honest. So to conclude, next please. Um, we do uh, have an emerging uh, discipline called maritime mathematics. It's an applied science for the maritime industry. It engages both practitioners and researchers for a common goal. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I think that we found a gap where, where actually a lot of people are becoming engaged. And this is a global concern, which is, which is really nice. Uh, and, but we need also to then, of course, reflect the contextual differences uh, at the different sides of the world. It promotes standardized digital data sharing throughout the cargo chain. It supports enhanced efficiency, safety, security, resilience, and sustainability in maritime transports. It enables understanding, uh, predicting, advising, and improving maritime activity. It enables seamless integration to the larger transport system. We think, uh, and uh, the people that are working on this, that maritime mathematics is the key of, to the future of maritime transports. Next, please. To be a little bit uh, academic, so to say, it is a science for change. It, is, uh, it requires both the engaged scholarship, and that means that the researchers are actually engaging together with the industry, but it also requires the reflective practitioner. And what we need to ensure is that we do not pave the cow paths. That means that, uh, and this is most often the distinction between digitizing and digitalizing. Uh, take, for example, e-bill of lading. That is creating a huge uh, a number of new possible opportunities uh, where the customs in the other end, so to say, for example, could be preparing themselves for the incoming goods while the ship is at sea, for example. So, um, next please. Um, having said all this, there is a strong backup for this, and I'm very, very happy to be here at the, in this community to talk about this, and, and please join uh, the forces with us now so that we really are pushing, uh, pushing the, the, um, the maritime mathematics uh, uh, discipline or, or discourse forward. I mean, we have people from UNCTAD, uh, we have people from uh, famous professors from, from academia, academia, we have shipping company CIOs, uh, CIOs of ports, uh, and, and, and uh, also uh, authorities with us on this. So, so uh, think about it. Next, please. So again, uh, visit uh, maritimemathematics.org uh, to follow uh, all the things and writings that are coming up and, and uh, feel free to reach out if you also would like to expose something that uh, is of interest in, for this community. Thank you.